Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a full face testing some hot new makeup releases. I recently went to Sephora. I've ordered a couple things. I really wanted to try out this new House Labs foundation that has been getting so much hype. So um, I thought we would go ahead and do a full face test some things out, do a wear test, and let you guys know kind of my first impressions on these new things if they are worth picking up. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to go ahead and prime my face just using my tried and true hourglass vanish airbrush primer it's just a go-to for me and since it's my favorite and we're testing a new foundation i want to see how they will work together but this one's awesome if you guys do have more oily skin it really smooths everything and keeps my skin pretty matte throughout the day so for our foundation, we are going to go in with the new House Labs one. This just launched yesterday, the Triclone Skin Medium Coverage Foundation with Fermented Arnica. Such a long name. It's $45. I picked out the shade 100 Light Neutral, which I did go ahead in stores and test this out um, since House Labs is now in 500 Sephora. So... My Sephora just got them yesterday. So it's supposed to be a medium coverage, weightless. It's a clean foundation, and the Fermented Arnica is supposed to help with redness, which is good. I do have kind of like pinky red undertones to my skin, um, so it's going to help even skin tone, and it's supposed to protect from environmental stress. It says you can use it with your fingers, a brush, or your beauty blender. So I'm going to use two pumps. Well, maybe one and a half to start. And we will blend this all over. Right off the bat, I love the finish of this. It's definitely a medium coverage, but it sinks right into the skin. It's a thinner consistency. It's not heavy at all, which I do prefer in my foundations. I'm adding just a smidge more, so in total we're going to use about two pumps. I do like a decent amount of coverage, so I do apply quite a bit of foundation, I would say. Now, for the foundation, I really thought it was going to be a lot more dewy, and I don't know if it's because I used the primer, but it's actually kind of a nice satin finish. It has more matteness to it than I thought it would. So here is a close-up on the foundation. It definitely hid some of these acne marks but didn't cover it completely, just like a true medium coverage. I'm going to add in my NARS Creamy Concealer to these blemishes here. And I'm going to let that sit while we do our eyes. But this will just give us a little bit more coverage to cover up those spots. So after I do my foundation, I do like to switch on over to the eyes. So I'm going to zoom in. We are going to be trying out this Il Maquillage in Kathleen Lights collab that they did. Originally, I wasn't going to purchase this, but I saw someone put it on on TikTok and it looked really stunning. So I was like, let's just go ahead and try it. Little did I know how expensive this palette is. I was not thinking much of it, but I think I spent in total like $80 for this palette, which is insane. I know... I haven't really tried a lot of Il Maquillage, but dang, that's that's expensive, or that's expensive in Kathleen's words. This is the packaging. It's like a disco theme, so this is the Disco Fox Pressed Pigment Palette. Really fun rose gold packaging, and then the palette opens up, and you actually have quite a bit of neutrals, and then some pops of purple and some rose. We do have this color story a lot currently. I just reviewed the Natasha Denona Dream Palette, which kind of has a similar color scheme, but this is what I like. I love neutrals. I love a little pop of color. So we'll see how the formula is on this, if it's worth the high price tag. So I am priming my eyes with some Too Faced Shadow Insurance. I always prime before applying shadow. I'm going to take this middle kind of cool tone neutral brown. I believe it's called Boogie Shoes in the crease. Really nice formula. It's very soft, uh, but also very pigmented. It definitely pulls a lot more warm on the eyes. I was expecting it to be a bit more cool. Next, I'm going to take this one. It has some little stars in it. This is... You're so vain. And I'm going to also place this in the crease just very lightly since this is a deeper tone. This color doesn't seem to be blending out as easy. 
so outer corner we're gonna take this even darker brown called ladies night Again, this has really great pigment to it and not a whole lot of fallout with these eyeshadows, which is nice. I think the main issue is just kind of getting it all blended. I'm going to take some excess product that was on my little crease brush and run this on the lower lash line. And very lightly dipping in to your so vain again now in the tiktok that i watched she did a gorgeous bronze sparkly look like it was so sparkly i think what i'm going to do first is take this bronze which is the dancing queen one of my favorite abba songs i'm going to place this on my lid it's really soft very melty this is more of like your satin but it looks like these three tones here are going to be more glittery so I'm going to use this as like a base. I do love a good bronze smoky look. So I could just leave it at that for every day. All right, now let's try out and see if this really is as sparkly as it looked in the video I saw. This is Funky Town. Ooh, this definitely is glittery. This reminds me a little bit of um, Urban Decay Diamond Dog. I used to love that shadow, but... See, I feel like I need glitter glue to make this pop because in her video, it looked way more sparkly than it does on me. I wish this had a little bit more of like a gel base where I could really pop that glitter. So this is how it looks on its own. I'm going to pop a little bit of my NYX glitter glue on and then we'll use that same shade again on top. I can't believe like how shimmery it looked in the TikTok. I don't know. It seems a little bit of false advertising. <laughs> it's still very pretty though. I am adding some brown liner. I'm going to use the House Labs one. This one is in Deep Cocoa Matte. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the face and we're going to do concealer. I actually have so many new concealers, so it was hard to pick which one I wanted to use. But I figured we would try out this new one from Milk Makeup because it's been a bit since I've tried something from them. So this is called their Future Fluid All Over Medium Coverage Hydrating Concealer. Retails for $29 and it's supposed to be, again, medium to full coverage. It hydrates for a lightweight, crease-proof, natural finish. I do have the shade... Let's see. I think this is 3N. It looks very light, so hopefully this will work. Oh my, that's so light. Yeah. I definitely need a deeper tone. But let's see what it looks like blended out. I do think it looks very nice under the eyes. I will say that. I just have to kind of blend my foundation into the bottom but it looks very smooth it's not really sinking into any fine lines but i feel like since this shade's too light it's it's gonna look like i have dark circles so it's gonna not gonna be the best wear test with this we'll see how it goes i'm just kind of blending that with my finger a bit but it does seem like it has a pretty decent coverage in my opinion and yeah it just it looks nice it looks nice under the eyes so next what i'm going to do is set my full face with the new house labs powder so bio blurring loose setting powder i didn't know if i should get the translucent i did pick one of the colors though this is in neutral peach which is the lightest color i didn't even know she was coming out with powder i thought it was just the foundation but i was really curious in trying it, it also has that fermented arnica in here so again to help with redness um it's talc free as well and i do like that it does have one of those little spongy things so you don't pick up too much product so let me try this under the eye and we'll also set the rest of the face okay so here is how it looks off the bat this does not look like a fully matte powder it looks like it has a little bit of a glow to it for some reason i think from far away it is blurring but something is happening here and it's not looking good on some texture that I have. But I do notice a difference in like the smoothness. Like this eye just looks a little bit brighter than this one. But I almost wish it was like an actual matte powder. Let me go ahead and do the other side. 
Okay, so this side does look good. I have definitely less texture going on here, so we'll see how that wears throughout the day. All right, I'm going to apply some mascara here. I don't have like a brand new one on the market, but this is the new one that I've been using lately. It's from the brand... I don't know how to say this correctly, KR Wise, I believe. It is a more, kind of more luxury brand. Um, I think they sell their stuff, I've seen it on like Nordstrom, I believe. Uh, maybe Beautylish, but I've been loving this mascara. This has been a go-to. I think this is the only one they have. It's just called the Impossible Mascara. And it does take a lot for a high-end mascara to really impress me, but this one just, it does everything I want lengthens volumizes it doesn't clump up but it still makes your lashes look incredible and it does not transfer it's nice because i feel like i can keep building it and it doesn't get too clumpy so i feel like that makes the lashes look so good i do have a new brow product today from benefit they're always coming out with some new brow stuff which kudos to them for always thinking of some new things i know brows are like their best thing so we have the gimme brow plus volumizing pencil so it's supposed to be a volumizing fiber eyebrow pencil i'm really curious about this one because usually i have to use two products i usually use a pencil and then like a fiber gel so maybe this will kind of give me everything i want let's see what this will do there's also a spoolie this is a sharpenable one too which typically benefit stuff is like twist up so that's different this place is a lot more pigment than let's say the precisely my brow use a light hand if you're used to those tiny like points so you're gonna get a lot of pigment here i definitely notice it being thicker than the typical pencil so that's definitely something new, but there's no like loose like fibers or anything. So that's why I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I'm just not, I don't know where they're saying the fiber thing is coming from, but I definitely think you get a thicker look. That's for sure. So yeah, I would say that looks good. I feel like I don't even need a brow gel unless I want to use a clear one to fluff them up. But I feel like this is kind of nice if you're like in a hurry. But yeah, I think I like it. I like this a lot. Definitely different. This is more of like your thick brow look. Like I know it's the feather brows that are popular, but I like this look too for something a little more dramatic. Next up, we do have a new blush to try. And if you guys saw my purchase or past video, I said I was interested in picking one of these up. So I saw it on Sephora and I decided let's try it. This is so overpriced for sure, <laughs> but I do love their bronzer. This is the new Gucci blush. It's Blush de Butte. Rosy Beige is the color that I got, and it says cheeks and eyes powder, so you can use it on the eyes. Now, it has a fun little clasp. The packaging is very gorgeous, so it just kind of splits down the middle here, and here is the color that I got. It does have that Gucci smell. Overall, this has a nice pigmentation to it. It's buildable, but it's not super crazy right off the bat. I think this is a nice color that I picked as well. And this one does have a tiny bit of sheen to it. Is it out of this world? I would say probably not, but you're paying for packaging, you're paying for brand here. Okay, lastly, we have lips. I am gonna go in with a lip liner. I'm just using my Huda. This is the Honey Beige which is one of the best natural nudes that goes with pretty much everything. And I do have a new lip gloss to try out today. And this is from the Gwen Stefani Give line. And really why I bought this is because of the name, which is so silly, but this whole lip gloss line is called Bubble Pop Electric, which is one of my favorite songs from her, is it the Harajuku album? Anyways. It's such a fun song, and I feel like no one ever knows about that one, but I used to love it back in the day. I had that CD, so I had to give this a try. I picked up the shade Sweet Tooth, which is this really light nude. It looks a little bit more pinky online, so getting it, I'm happy to see it is more of a nude. Um, and then on here, it says me. And then on the side, it does say me, you, and yours in cursive. Uh, so let's try this out and see how the formula is. This smells like cake batter. Oh, this is thick. Okay. Is this supposed to be a gloss? Maybe I should reread what I bought. This smells incredible. I can't get over the smell. It's so strong. 
and you guys know I love cake scents. But yeah, this this is a crazy gloss, like super pigmented, but it's a bit sticky on the lips. If you guys can kind of see. On the description it says a creamy high shine gloss with buildable color and a mirror-like finish for a fuller plumper pout. It definitely offers a bit of shine. I wouldn't say it's as shiny as some other glosses that I have. So here is the final look testing out all the products. I do want to wear this for a few more hours and I'll come back and kind of give you guys my first impressions on these products. Okay guys, so I am back. It has been about five to six hours or so since I last applied my makeup I wanted to show you how everything has worn and give you guys my thoughts on these products so far so here is a close-up of the skin and how we are looking I know we're probably most curious about the foundation so let's start with that I actually think it is looking really beautiful on the skin it is looking very dewy on the skin though so it definitely gets a little bit oily and um i feel like maybe that could be the powder too because i don't feel like this powder is a very mattifying powder i know it's described as a blurring one but i mean i am impressed with how good the foundation looks it doesn't look cakey anything like that it actually looks very pretty on the skin it hasn't like worn off in many spots as far as i can tell i think it looks really nice I'm going to just apply a little bit more powder here just to kind of touch up and get rid of some of that shine. So I am impressed with the foundation so far. I was worried with, I don't know why, but it was looking a little bit dry on me in the beginning, which is odd because I've seen a lot of people and reviewers say that it looks more glowy on them, but on me it was definitely more matte or I would say satin finish. Um, I was worried it would kind of sink into some of my dryness or any fine lines, but I think it looks gorgeous on the skin. Just gets a little dewy, which doesn't really hurt, um, especially as we're getting into the cooler months. I think I'm gonna like this, and I'm curious to test it out with some of my more mattifying powders. The Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder, definitely, I don't think this is for oily skin, um, probably more dry skin. It did enhance like a little bit of my texture in this area, because it has a slight luminosity to it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really hold up so well. Does it blur the skin a little bit? But I'm looking for more of a matte appearance with my powder, so I don't think I'm loving this one so much. Definitely prefer the foundation. This powder also did not hold my concealer very well either uh, because it got kind of greasy under there um, after just a few hours and I started getting a little bit of smudging. So I had to actually set again with my usual powder, which was the Sigma, and it looks much better. So. Yeah, the powder, I'm thinking for now it might be a pass for me. As far as the concealer goes though, I do think this looks good under the eyes. Here it is close up. It hasn't worn off too much and even though we did get a lighter shade, it still looks good. Like I feel like if I actually get my correct shade, it'll be even more amazing. But usually concealers wear off so quick for me. I feel like this one looks really nice on the skin. It's not enhancing my lines or anything like that. So that must be the nice hyaluronic acid in there doing something. So, so far I actually do enjoy this concealer and I feel like it's doing a very good job underneath the eyes. I also really like this Benefit Brow Pencil that we tried, the Gimme Brow Volumizing. I think this looks so good. I didn't even use any brow gel or anything and I feel like our brows are holding pretty well. I didn't have to go in with an extra product so I really like this one um, for more of that kind of thicker look. Definitely gives some more volume there and it's pretty easy and creamy to use so I actually would recommend this. I like this one a lot. As far as the eyeshadow palette goes from Il Maquillage, it's pretty. It's a very nice neutral palette but I don't think it's worth that high price tag. The shadows, they're pretty, but they're not up there with like Natasha for me or even Patrick Ta shadows. I know those are a little bit more pricey, but those are worth it for me. Those glitters are so beautiful. These are not quite the same quality, not as sparkly. I had to use glitter glue with those to really pop them and they still didn't pop completely, but it's still a nice neutral palette that I will get a lot of use out of because I love my neutrals. This is really nice just for every day. 
So it's pretty, but I probably wouldn't spend the 70, 80 bucks I spent on this. I don't think it's worth that high of a price tag. Let's skip on over to this Gucci blush. Another item that is pretty overpriced in my opinion. This is almost 50 bucks for this blush. And it's pretty, but I feel like it has faded throughout the day. I don't really notice it as much on my cheeks. There is definitely some better ones out there, but if you want gorgeous packaging, I mean, it is beautiful, but I just feel like I'm not getting the luxury quality feel out of this blush. I really like their bronzer, though. Um, but yeah, I just feel like our blush has faded and hasn't lasted quite as long. I do have a little bit of luminosity left over from the blush, but the formula is just nothing that's out of this world special to, pray, to pay those crazy prices. And then lastly is lips. I did have to reapply this today after I ate lunch. Um, I think that was a couple hours ago and I put this on again. I will say this is a stickier, thicker gloss, but the color lasts on the lips. Like, it doesn't fade away way and sometimes those glosses that do have a little bit more slip to them kind of fade as you wear them this color actually stays on for a decent amount of time I wish it wasn't quite as sticky the smell is incredible on this I will say so I really don't mind this I think it's a pretty color I like how it is and how it wears on the lips but I just wish it was just a little bit less sticky but if you don't mind a sticky gloss definitely check these out they are really nice and the colors do last I believe that is everything I had to talk about in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and found it helpful. Let me know if you guys will be picking any of these products up. I will definitely try to update you guys the more I try these out, but those are my thoughts so far. I will have everything I used linked down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you do buy anything and use my links, it is very much appreciated. It really means a lot and helps out my channel so much, but I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.